Lovette, my name is Rachel, and I got into vet school. And it's still a bit of a shock, but I learned so much through this process and realized that sometimes half the trouble is just figuring out what you're supposed to do next. I've also realized that I had a very fortunate position when I applied to vet school. I have really supportive parents and amazing veterinary mentors, and I know that not everyone has that. So I suppose that the whole point of Bella Vet is to be a part of your support system and hopefully take away some of the frustration that comes along with just understanding the process. So without further ado, here are my tips on how to get into vet school. Okay, so step one is to start logging your hours, and this is something that can be done as soon as you decide that you want to be a veterinarian, basically. The first time that I really seriously started logging my hours was probably junior year of high school. But if you're in college, if you're a freshman in college and you're just starting out, you've just figured out that this is what you want to do, it is definitely not too late to start logging your hours. And when I say log your hours, definitely keep a detailed journal because later when you apply to vet school, you'll have to list all of your responsibilities that you had while you had that job or while you shadowed that day. So you really don't want to wait and see if you're going to remember it later. You want to be able to look back on a really detailed journal. Also get some variety because veterinary medicine is small animal, it's large animal, it's equine, it's livestock. Try to get some variety, but you also don't want to spread yourself too thin. Definitely establish yourself in whatever experience you're doing. And if you're a horse girl, if you definitely know that small animal is what you want to go into, it's okay to have a really big focus and to say this is my passion within veterinary medicine, but what the admissions committees are looking for is that you really understand veterinary medicine as a whole. Also, get to know the people that you're working with. If you get a job at a vet clinic, even if it's volunteer, get to know your coworkers, get to know the veterinarians that are advising you because you want to start picking up and making relationships with people that could possibly give you like letters of recommendation. Okay, so step two is to go see your academic advisor. And you might also wanna go see how many academic advisors you have, which may sound strange depending on the size of school that you go to, but I went to Michigan State University for my undergrad and I participated in Lyman Briggs College, which is a science residential college, and so I had a advisor from Lyman Briggs. I also had an advisor from Animal Science and I had an advisor from the College of Veterinary Medicine undergraduate offices. So all three of those people gave me a really great foundation for my questions and they could talk to each other if somebody didn't know the answer. I had a bit of a unique situation. I applied in three years so I applied between my soft the summer between my sophomore and junior year but that meant that I squeezed all of my prereqs into three years. Last but not least, uh, I know a lot of people have questions about the classes that I took and the schools that I applied to and how I fit it all in in three years and I will post my schedule and my big spreadsheet in the down bar. Okay so step three is to study and this is probably one of the hardest steps because it lasts the longest um, and when I first came in freshman year my first semester I fell on my face I failed my first two exams it was really hard and I had to throw out all of my study methods and find new ones figure out what worked best for me so I say when you go into undergrad your first couple of semesters definitely experiment with your study techniques and find the ones that work best for you also to give you guys a little bit better idea of my study technique in undergrad um, I typically studied five days in advance for any exam and I would rewrite my notes that was one of the most helpful things that I did I know in vet school I might not have time to do that but in undergrad it was definitely one of my keys and also for vet school, you guys should know that a competitive GPA, typically this does vary from school to school, but what I was told in my advising meetings and all of that was it's about a 3.6. My GPA applying to vet school is about a 3.78, but schools don't look only at your GPA. They look at a really big picture and they look at your experience and your interview and your jury. Step four, the jury. The jury is broken into three sections, the verbal, the quantitative, and the writing. My one piece of advice for the GRE is there's a brand name book, I'll put it in the link bar below, uh, but it is really helpful. It's what I used. Um, it's got several practice exams and it has a little CD in it. It's like a simulator software of what it's actually like to take the test, which was really helpful because I have some uh, test anxiety and so that helps bring it down because you're like, okay, this is exactly what I'm going to 
be able to expect. Um, also, you should take it early, so if you need to retake it, that you can, um, or if you want to retake it, that you have that option. A decent score, a good place to start at least, if you add your verbal and your quantitative scores together and they equal around 300, I would say that that's a good place to start. Um, if you're way above that, awesome. I probably wouldn't take it again if I were you, but if you're below that, you might want to really seriously consider retaking it. Um, also look at the rest of your application and if you could use the GRE to help boost your status then yeah retake it but if you are really strong in another area you might not want to spend the money to take that expensive test again and you, it might be more worthwhile for you to invest it in a different part of your application. So step five is FIMCAS, which stands for the Veterinary Medical College Application Service. And this is the step where you actually apply to vet school. And there are so many things to consider. The first of which is which schools to apply to. And you'll probably want to apply to your in-state school at least. That for most people is their cheapest option. Um, for me, I had the extra variable of which schools I could apply to. A lot of them required the speech class that I just wasn't able to fit into my three-year plan and so I couldn't apply to those schools. Some of them even had requirements that you need a bachelor's degree and so I also couldn't apply to those schools, but I ended up applying to seven schools in the end. You're going to want to start as soon as the application opens. The more time you have, the better, and this is especially important because customer service of Vimcast is not the best and it has its good days but it also has its very very bad days and I like to give them the benefit of the doubt because last year when I applied it was their first year running their new they kind of revamped the whole application website and I get that there are, there's a lot of troubleshooting in that so the application is broken up into four sections they are personal information, academic history, supporting information, and program materials. So you'll kind of get to this page after you've selected your schools, and you can always go back and change that, um, and then you just slowly fill out all of these sections. And the one that you're probably going to be working the most on is supporting information. That's where you're going to find where you can input all of your ELORs, which are electronic letters of recommendation. Uh, they require that you have at least three of those and some schools you're gonna have to pay attention to which schools you apply to because some schools say that you have to have at least one veterinarian some schools don't care some schools say one veterinarian and one professor so you just want to be really attuned to that and make sure that you get the right letters of recommendation from the right people so you also have two essays in this application, one of which is your personal statement and the other is your explanation statement. In the explanation statement, it is a place that you can talk about whether you've had a break in your education or if you have some sort of adversity, whether it be financial or social or anything like that. And one last thing, you're going to want to submit the application relatively early. This year, I believe it's due on September 15th. That's when it was due in my cycle as well. I submitted it around the 22nd of August. I really wanted to have that gap time, that grace period, in case there was some problem with my application, then they could send it back to me and I could revise it and then send it back to them. You're really going to want that grace period because everyone is going to be turning their applications in around the same time and their offices can get really overloaded. Step six is filling out your supplemental applications. Some schools they can be just a simple questionnaire and other schools they can be multiple essays. Step seven, and now we wait. I submitted my application in mid-August and I did not hear for my first interview invite until mid-October. Now, not all schools do interviews, only three out of seven of my schools actually held interviews at all. So step eight is the interview. They can be really fun, they can be really scary and intimidating, but don't worry, you can prepare for them. First, you want to figure out what format your interview is in. It can be in multiple mini, which means that you have a bunch of about eight minute long interviews. Another format is open file, which means that they have your file open on the table while they're interviewing you and they can ask you questions from it. And the third format is closed file, where they know nothing about you going into the interview. 
really good resource to use for preparing for an interview is Student Doctor Network. It's a website that's built mostly of forums and there's typically one forum at least for every application cycle for every school. And there are other forums that have these big long lists of all of the schools and people fill in the questions that they had been asked the year before and that can be really helpful so that you know what kinds of questions that your school typically asks now they're probably going to change year to year but it is good to just kind of get a gist of the things they expect you to know going in. So now before your interview it's always a good idea just to have examples from your life kind of on hand, um, some stories that you might want to think of and maybe sit down with your parents or a friend and just explain um, one instance where you exemplified leadership, one instance where you exemplified resiliency, and one instance where you exemplified working well under a stressful condition. So now you're probably wondering what you should wear to the interview. I wore a navy blue suit and for one interview I just wore a button-down shirt. It was light blue and for another interview I wore um, a very thick tank top and it was eyelet lace. So as for the makeup that I wore on those days, I wore just some mascara, some concealer, and a tinted lip balm. Okay, so step nine involves more waiting. Now, once you're done with your interviews, the interviews can be spread out over a couple months, but then you have that space of time where you're waiting for your decision to be made. Decisions are typically mailed out and sent through email around February and March. I got my first denial January 20th and I got my first acceptance on January 28th at least during my year, and it's probably similar this year. The decision of what school you would like to attend has to be made by April 15th. Step 10, choosing a school. I was admitted to three schools in my cycle and denied to four. One of the factors that you might want to consider is cost. I ended up going to the least expensive school that I applied to, which actually wasn't my in-state school. I ended up committing to a school that allowed for me to become a resident after the first year, which ended up being comparable or even a little less expensive than my in-state. You also want to look at the program that the school offers. Some schools offer tracking, which allows you to tailor your education to your interests. Some other things that you might want to consider are how established is your school, what is their retention rate, and what's their board pass rate. One more thing you might want to consider is whether or not they offer any dual degree programs. Now there are many dual degree programs, but the two major ones are a DBM PhD dual degree and a DBM Masters in Public Health dual degree. Now the last step is how to accept an offer. Make sure you know when your deadline is. For my cycle, it was April 15th. We had until that day to notify our schools that we had either accepted or denied their offer. Now, you're gonna wanna make sure that you call the school and ask them when your last transcript is due for them, and you also want to make sure that you turn in your check to secure your seat. I hope you guys will let me know which steps you want me to elaborate on in another more in-depth video. Please be sure to subscribe and ask me any vet school questions you have in the comments below. And thanks for watching Bella Vet.